On May 24, 2014, Ti Zeliang took over the reins from nephew Ryu and was sworn in as the 10th Chief Minister of Nagaland following nephew Ryu's shift to national level politics in Delhi. Tia Zeliang, one of the most vibrant political personality in the present day Naga politics, have had an illustrious political career spanning over three decades. From losing his home constituency twice in a row during his initial years in politics, to becoming the 10th Chief Minister of Nagaland, the man has seen it all. But little do people know of this man's extraordinary struggles and his never-say-die attitude as he went on to become the most prominent figure in the present-day Naga politics. This is the story of a man who dared to dream. This is T.R. Zeliang's story so far. In the year 1952, during the peak Naga struggle for independence from the Indian government, a child was born in the cold winter of February 21st in a small village called Mbaupungwa. The village was inhabited by the Zeliang tribe and nestled in the far interiors of Peiren district of Nagaland, bordering the present-day Manipur. This child was born amidst a prophecy foretold to the mother by a woman with clairvoyant abilities, that she would give birth to a boy, and he shall grow up to be a great man and a leader. Taditui Rangkau Zeliang better known as T.R. Zeliang, was born to Ranglo Rangkau Zeliang and Gaibui Rangkau Zeliang of the Zeliang tribe of Nagaland. He was the sixth child out of the seven sons born to the couple. It is said that when T.R. Zeliang's mother, Gaibui, was experiencing labor pain with T.R. in her womb, she had a vision of a man in a white gown and the man told her, Gaibui, the child that you carry will be a son, and you shall christen him Taditui. After the birth of the child, Gaibui believed that the man was a messenger from God, asking her to name her child Taditui, which means to live a life and become a leader. So she named her son Taditui. The <laughs> Me <laughs> Send 
Even as a small boy, Ti Arzeliang had something special about him and was loved by all in the village. His great-grandfather, Nam So, was very fond of him and would often carry him on his back or put him on his shoulders and walk around the village and narrate the young TR the stories of their forefathers and their struggles before they settled in Umbao Pungwa. TR would listen patiently to his great-grandfather and slowly he imbibed a sense of understanding about his culture and people. Even though he was just a small boy, he had the understanding of the struggles and the stories of his tribe with good looks and the knowledge imparted by his great-grandfather, a young T.R. would charm and amaze everyone in the village with his knowledge about his forefathers and their journey to the present village. The elders in the village would gather inside the Morong and listen to T.R. in awe as he would narrate the names of his forefathers even at such a tender age. It was as though the prophecy had already started to come true. During the early 50s, the Mbaupungwa village was almost cut off from the rest of the country and the world. The village would be hit with famine often, and the villagers would starve and face all sorts of hardships. And for a large family like Tiaz, life was even harder. His parents had faced great difficulty in raising their seven sons, and they lived in abject poverty and hardship. ไอ้เจ้าเปลี่ยนจีเตลุเจ้าเมืองกังกะเตตะกาอนุฮังเมงเงยฮังโรอนุกกกะกะเนกกเตปอสัมละกกกะกะเนเตเจ้าเรกะ
the Haraka Movement under Rani Gaidinyo, a freedom fighter from Zeliangrong tribe, staunchly opposed any conversion to Christianity by any Naga, particularly from the Zeliangrong tribe who were spread across Manipur and Nagaland. A young TR followed his father and brother to their new settlement in Nkialwa village, some 12 kilometers from Mbalpungwa. Around the same time, a teacher named Zapufise had come to Mbalpungwa village as the first government appointed teacher. TR got enrolled in the school nearby and started receiving his first formal education. Unfortunately, just a year later, Zapufise was abducted by the Naga army and taken away. The village, once again, was left without any teacher. But this did not deter TR from seeking education. And so, after a year of discontinuing his studies, he went to Peiren to continue with his schooling. 1957, by now, the young Tia's life was already in turmoil. Seeing his parents being chased out from their own village because of their faith in Christ, amidst a life of continuous hardships, and his struggle to get an education had made him restless. Even at a tender age, he was experiencing the harsh realities of life, and this made him question his existence and the atmosphere around him. He would not talk much and would spend most of his times alone in the wilderness near his village. taken a long journey of up and down in my life and all sorts of difficulties and hardships I have faced since uh, my childhood. See, I was born in a village called uh, Mbopungwa village, which is one of the remote places in the state, that in Peren district. In my village, when I was young, four or five years, there was no school because of this Haraka movement, I mean Rani Gaidilu freedom movement. My father and my brother, they have decided to convert into Christianity. So at that point of time, my village was very strong in this Haraka religion movement. No one is allowed to stay in the village if one uh, is a Christian. So, my father was excommunicated from the village. That period was like a nightmare. It was a very difficult time that my parents, they, they, they faced. T.R. Zeliang had a zeal to study, since no one in his family could pursue proper formal education. He would walk long hours from his home to reach his school through the narrow jungle road. Uh, Tear hard the letter 
ปะนดาหนาบลอลุงจัวเจมะดูกะเดปะปราตาเตละมาอานิปะจัวจิงเบเดเดปะปูเบเดเดปะปูเจเลเดมะดูเดปราตาลุเอปะจูปราตาบะ
but from the entire village who started to look up to him with hope. Whenever he would come back from his school for vacations, elders and youths from the village nearby would flock around him and request him to write applications for them. There was already a sense of responsibility building up in Tiao's shoulders to represent the voice of his people in the village and the surrounding villages. And like a prophecy coming true again, his elders advised him to join politics when he had just stepped into college. Soon after, T.R. started a logging business. Further, seeing his people in the village finding it hard to commute and venture towards cities for job opportunities and businesses, he persuaded his brothers to get a bus for the villagers. T.R., along with his brothers, obtained a loan from the bank and started a bus service from Peiren to Dimapur. The bus service proved to be a boon to the villagers, who had long been cut off from the other townships, which had access to better amenities. ชิจุบะแมวันนั้นเอติทูดาวอิเล็กชั่นน่ะซาบราอากาเทนิงเรียอาจุลังกวงอาจุลังดิเกอิสเตยลาเกจุดิเกพอปลิงบอกกางปุ
কিনে কাজ আছে কি টাইপ আছে মো খান রিমেম্বর করা তো তাই তো একদম ঠান্ডা মানু আছে আর তাই মানুষকে কেতিয়া বি মোক পড়া তাই লাগা নিয়ম পড়া আদাত পড়া কেতিয়া বি মানুষকে হার্ড করা মানু নয় তাই একদম পিস লভিং মানু আছে আমার খান জাত সুতো জেলিয়াং মানু দুইটা এসেম্বলি কনস্টিটুয়েন্সিতে আছে বুঝলে বি এটা নাগালেন্ডে চিফ মিনিষ্টার করে পড়া তো এই ঈশ্বর লাগা ব্লেসিং পড়াই আছে আমার খান জেলিয়াং মানু পড়া পড়া নয় আমার খান জেলিয়াং মানু ডর জাত বিশে এম এল এ থাকা পড়া পড়া নয় বুঝলে বি এই ঈশ্বর পড়াই আমার খানকে মদত করে নে ঈশ্বর লা ব্লেসিং পড়া এই টিয়ার জেলিয়াং আজি এনে কাত্তাক পড়া আছে লিভিং থ্রু টু দ্য প্রফেসি ফোটোল্ড ইন দ্য ড্রিম অফ টিয়ার্স মাদার The young boy who enchanted everyone with his charisma was now set to face the most difficult times of his life. In the year 1982, in a sudden turn of events before the assembly election in Nagaland, four villages of Tusen, three villages of Mbaupungwa, and two villages of Nchangram held a meeting and decided that there should be a candidate from each one of these villages for the upcoming election at this juncture they had to pick one candidate each from their respective village tr was picked as the candidate from umbaupungwa village and since the two candidates of tusen and changram village refused to contest the election it was now upon tr to fight the election Gradually the leaders of 13 villages spread across Peren came to him and assured him of their support in the ensuing election but when the election drew nearer TR got a major blow to his campaign some villages who had promised their support to him started to change their stand as the election closed in in course of this campaign when election polling date was drawn nearer people started changing their stand so i was really amazed how people can change with such short period of time i move on to the campaign since i have decided i went up to the last and we lost in the election after having tasted the first defeat in the election and the betrayal by some of the villagers TR decided it was only wise to continue the fight than sit down and regret about the things that went against him. His wife too voluntarily resigned from her job to join him in the mission he had started. Now fully determined to come back stronger, Mr. Zeliang filed his nomination as a Naga National Democratic Party (NNDP) candidate in the 1987 Nagaland Assembly election but lost again. This time the margin narrowed down and he had lost by just 53 votes amidst controversy surrounding the ballot counting of his constituency. Initially, it was declared that TR had won, but later the news came about that the counting of the ballots of one of the villages had been missed out. TR had lost by 53 votes. Trouble started brewing in Hokeshi Sema Ministry. just 8 months after the government was formed the ministry collapsed and president's rule was imposed fresh elections took place in 1989 ti azeliang filed his nomination for the third time and won for the first time but what seemed like a smooth sail having had his first victory things took a turn for the worse After the subsequent toppling of the government under SC Jamia and Vamuzo Pesao, KL Chishi formed the government. For the first time, TR Zeliang was appointed Minister of State for Tourism and Publicity. But within 30 days, crisis struck again and Vamuzo Pesao took over the government. Later, TR would be disqualified under anti-defection law. and would be forced to spend most of the years as a member of legislative assembly running around the courts to revoke his disqualification i got elected but i could not do much for the people and because of this we spend most of our time in the court but at last just before the announcement of this uh, the next election we have won the case Having spent almost all his 5 years running around the court for the revocation of his disqualification, 
TR had not been able to do anything for his constituency, and the 1993 assembly election had been declared already. He once again decided he would fight the election and filed his nomination through the Indian National Congress ticket. During this time, there was a sudden surge of sympathy and support by the public for TR. He won the election by a huge margin of votes, and he was inducted as the Minister of Forest in the SC Jamia government the following year. The 1998 and 2002 assembly elections were the two most difficult elections in T.R. Zeliang's political career. In 1998, the Nagahoho, the regional party NPC, and the underground group decided that there should be solution first, election second. And so they all boycotted the election that year. But despite all these boycotts, the Congress party decided to go ahead with the election amidst the warning that no candidate should file the nomination. TR decided to file the nomination since his party had sent strict directives to all the candidates who had received party tickets to go ahead with the election. Day and night, underground leaders, they used to come to me and they used to tell me that you should not file nomination. If you file nomination, it will be at your own risk. Similarly, in the year 2003, the underground group issued a directive to all the contesting candidates that they could contest from any other party besides the Congress party. It was another major blow for TR, since he was in the Congress party and had received a party ticket to run for the election. Owing allegiance to his party, TR filed his nomination only to receive the news that his chief agent had been taken away by the underground group as a caution to him to withdraw from the election. When I went for filing up nomination, on my way I was stopped by underground leaders. So I told them, no, I'll go to Peren if other district do not file nomination. I'll not file nomination and come back. But if all other district file nomination, then I'll also file. So I went there, listening to radio, that 24, 25 already filed nomination. So I filed nomination and came back. And fortunately, nobody filed nomination from other party. So I got uncontested. After the polling of the 2003 election, when the results were declared, it surprised and baffled everyone in the political fraternity and the public alike. Like a miracle, T.R. Ziliang was elected with a huge margin of votes. Despite being threatened with dire consequences if anyone were to vote for T.R., the public had secretly voted him to power. That was another nightmare that I have, I have faced the election, and which I have never faced in my lifetime. My wife was asked to convey to me that your husband should retire. Withdrawal date is over, but he should retire. And if he go up to the last, he'll face uh, consequences. So she came and told me that uh, your life is more important. Let us stop from here. But I said, no, they'll not take our life. I have confidence that they'll not take our life. It's okay, God is there. Let us go ahead. To our surprise, counting day, I got elected by a margin of more than 2,000. We were really shocked that in such kind of situation, how people could vote for us. So thereby I came to know that election is not by our money, our strength, but God is behind us. From there, I truly believe that unless God help us, we cannot be elected in election. That is how I came to know through that election. And that was the worst election that we have faced. In his long career in politics, overcoming the toughest hurdles and obstacles right from his childhood made TR see life in a different perspective. Just as any man would, he lives with some regrets, 
some dreams, some aspirations that he still holds on to like a small child. By 2004, I was inducted as minister, minister of geology and mining. So after a few months, I was called by the chief minister to come up. When I came up, I was asked to decide to go as MP. That, that's not uh, my intention, and that's beyond my dream. So how can I think of, at last, party, central office, and the chief minister and colleagues, uh, pressure came that I should go. So, at last I have decided. That was a hard decision that I, I had to take. And uh, I went to Delhi as Rajya Sabha MP. Within four years of serving as a Rajya Sabha MP, Mr. Zeliang would be called back to the state where a difficult situation awaited him. And he had to make a hard decision. Before I complete four years, again, Chief Minister called me to Kohima. He asked me to come back to state. Then I was shocked again. Initially, I was not happy to be MP. My supporters stopped me. But going in parliament, and I was used to this uh, fighting for a project. Again, another hard decision I had to take. I was asked to contest from Peren, leaving my constituency. Tining. Growing up in a village, almost hidden from the outside world, amongst his brothers and his people, T.R. imbibed familial and human values from his great-grandfather and elders. He continues to give his first priority to his family and relationships with his people. Even after being constantly occupied with an arduous task of leading the mass, he carries the legacy of his forefathers and their teachings. Even his staunch political opponents today vouch for Mr. Zeliang as a humble and cool-tempered man. He is known as a person who never gives in to anger under any circumstance, a quality he has kept along all through his life. Like, it's not always a bed of roses. Like, you know, people may think we enjoy life every day, but it's not like that. Whenever like, you know, people criticize my father or whenever like, there is like you know a policy going wrong we all take the beating ourselves and it is like we're under constant scrutiny and criticism along with him so sometimes that that is very difficult in today's world with the social media being very strong in the society it is a challenge for all of us to be facing all hate comments and as such as on the social media i've always been kept away from politics but uh somehow you get uh involved and yeah criticisms we face every day through social media through newspapers but then i guess that's made us more uh, tolerant and acceptable towards what people has to say about us our dad as a chief minister is not a perfect person he's also a human being so we've never taken uh, this kind of negative comments or all of these negative comments personally but as, 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 uh, as a correction to our mistakes, we're all human beings and mistakes do happen. Despite of his busy, busy schedule in life, he used to always take out time and drop us after our vacation to school and also attend every event like our sports meet, yeah, school events. Over three decades in active politics and donning numerous hats, the man definitely has come a long way from a small sleepy village in the far interiors of Nagaland. Like a prophecy coming true, he has occupied the highest position and today continues to serve the state and his people. A small boy who dared to dream beyond the horizons of the mountains and the valleys, he took a journey braving all the struggles and hurdles life threw at him. He continues to take the long, winding, difficult road ahead of him. The journey continues for a man who still dares to dream and live through the prophecy. To me, truly speaking, uh, well, when I have problem, when people criticize me, uh, I, I don't feel guilty because what I'm doing and what my concept is right. So I always think that people, those who criticize me, will realize one day that they are wrong. I believe in that. 
and uh, I believe that the truth will always prevail. Now today, women reservation, people are criticizing, cursing, rally, and boycotting this election. But one day, I believe that people will realize this is a global concept, that women should be given the privilege to serve the people. And wherever in India, whichever state they have implemented this women reservation, they are happy. And uh, for, for a state like Kerala, they have gone up to this 55% uh, reservation, seat reservation for women. And I asked them, why government of India has uh, passed the, the, the act only for 33% women reservation? But why have you gone to 55? Then MLAs, ministers that who visited me when I was in Kerala, they told me that what to do? They are doing better. Town and city management to keep the city clean. That management and development Women representative, they are doing better than men. I wish I will complete this political journey after, say, a few years or so, and then I would like to have a retired life with the family. Because during these three decades or more, I did not have a family life. I would like to have a retired life with family in the village or outside the village. Actually, I don't like the city life. So I might go back to village and live a peaceful and retired life. With the blessing of my mother from God, I think not by muscle power, not by money power, but I have reached to these days. We believe that it is from God. The blessing has come from God and then from my mother and my great-grandfather. So we believe in that. But while traveling this journey, a rough road. I have faced a lot of problems and I never expect that I'll reach up to this level because we are a small tribe. We have only two MLAs and I can never dream of to become Chief Minister of the state. But well-wishers and uh, friends from other tribes, they have confidence in me, they have trust in me, that's why they have elected me to this place which is beyond my aspiration and my dream. <laughs>